People come to Varanasi to die, and when they do so, there is this ceremony. So, leaving Rishikesh and Leoni behind us, we find ourselves a number of weeks later at the border of Pakistan and India, a place called Waga Atari. And we are witnessing this very elaborate ceremony that is known as the border closing ceremony. Every night at Waga Atari, which is the only uh, entry point to Pakistan through India, every night they have this ceremony where the guards go out there really elaborately and make a big showman kind of spectacle. Goose step in and screaming and literally pounding their chest, ah, yelling. It's so crazy. The crowds are getting into it on both sides. You've got on this side is the Pakistani and they're going, Pakistan! And the other side, Hindustan! I guess Hindustan is what they used to call India. No, no, Pakistan! Ha! They're waving flags and screaming. No, no, Hindustan! And all the guards are just yelling. And then they go to take down the flags. And to take down the flag, neither country wants to have their flag taken down first. So you see them, they're like this. They're inching down the flags. And the one, they're going just a little bit. No, you lower yours first. No, no, you lower yours first. No, you lower yours a little bit more. Okay, same time, okay? It's just... <laughs> It's so entertaining to see. Uh, we really don't have anything to compare it to in America because we just don't have that level of animosity or tension between Americans and Canadians, you know? Uh, so there's really nothing to compare it to. It's very much like one of those clips you've seen on National Geographic where there's Different birds are fluffing themselves up, getting all fluffed up, and I'm bigger than you. No, look, I'm bigger. It was very much like that. Now, after our the spectacle at Waga Atari, we make our way into the very ancient pilgrimage city of Amritsar, and we find ourselves staying at the Golden Temple of the Sikhs. The Golden Temple was built in the 15th century by Guru Ram Das and is still to this day the most sacred pilgrimage site of the Sikh religion. One hundred thousand pilgrims visit this temple complex every day. Yeah, and all day and all night, 24 hours a day, there is a, there is a group of priests uh, chanting sacred scriptures over a loudspeaker. And so it's all coming over the loudspeaker and the temple complex and all the people and everyone. It's just such a holy, high vibrational place. The whole experience is just totally surreal. And 
and it was while staying at this Golden Temple complex that we met Minnie, the lovely Korean girl that was visiting, traveling to India alone for a month. And it just so happens we met her on her first day in the country. So we all meet randomly at the Golden Temple. And Minnie is the ideal addition to the wolf pack. Which, of course, was me originally in the wolf pack. And then it was Mark, and now it is Minnie in the wolf pack. You see, I love to put mint in my tea every day, and so I dehydrate the mint in the dehydrator and then when it's real crispy I'll put it in the blender to powder it and then it's really concentrated. It keeps like this all winter long. So get on it. Probably about 47 grams of the finest mint. Now, one of the days at the Golden Temple, I had the golden opportunity uh, that one of the priests came up to me and asked if I would like to take a ceremonial dip in the holy water. I thought, wow, what an incredible opportunity. And since at this time in my life, I was going by the motto that if a new experience presents itself, I'll do it. Pretty much, no matter what, it is for the most part. And so this definitely um, ticked that box. So yes, I will do it. But it's actually quite funny because uh, what you don't see in this picture is the 50 to 100 Indian men that are all gathered behind me uh, in a big crowd just watching the foreigner take a dip in their holy water. <laughs> but see, these pictures can only really portray the external experience and not the internal experience, which is actually far more profound. That's the part that I try to capture in the book that I'm writing, the internal experience. because. You see a picture, oh yeah, I'm, uh, I'm taking a dip in the holy water, but the experience, oh my God, it was mind blowing. Just because of all the factors that came in to my life at that time, everything leading up to that, where I was, the, the frequency of the place, the sound of, of the chanting, the, the high vibrations of the intentions of the people in the area and around me, and just the sacredness of the whole place was it all culminates to create this experience that just was giving me waves of, of um, like bliss. <laughs> and look, they were doing some repairs on uh, a part of the temple complex. And look at this scaffolding. Yes, I had to take a picture because of how unbelievably absurd it seemed to me at the time. But they are multiple stories up on this scaffolding that is literally lashed together from bamboo and twine. Then we got on a series of trains and buses and headed north to the home of the Dalai Lama, Dharamsala. It was just so wonderful traveling with Minnie. Seriously, be 
because for one, it was so easy to make her laugh. And that is about my most favorite thing in the world to do with someone. And so, and it was such a cute laugh too. And she was so innocent and just pleasant, just all around pleasant. And everywhere we went, people liked us as the trio, you know, they invited us to do things with them. Just doors were opening. It was just a magnificent experience. And it was just us three amigos in the wolf pack exploring northern India, having virtually non-stop mind-blowing first experiences together. One Korean, one English, and one American. That's what we used to say. So after a month of traveling together in this incredible fashion, we arrive at last to Varanasi. And the whole time I am very much looking forward to meeting up with Leonie and traveling together as we had arranged. But for the time being, I found myself in the midst of a truly incredible situation. You see, Varanasi is an ancient city, uh, at least 3,000 years old, and it is considered by Hindus to be the ideal spot to end or depart from your earthly pilgrimage and continue on your journey on the merry-go-round of human and animal incarnations. Charcoal is ready now. People come to Varanasi to die. And when they do so, there is this ceremony where the family of the deceased carry the body through the streets, singing and chanting, almost like a celebration more than a lamentation. Now that being said, I didn't see any, none of the dead bodies I saw were of children or of young people they were a very elderly people. So maybe the tomb would have been different if they were young bodies, but this did not seem sad. So the family carries the body through the streets to the most ancient part of the city, right on the shore of the Ganges River, the Ganga, the mighty Ganga. And they place the body in this wooden structure that's already been made of this very special kind of wood that burns extremely hot. Now, of course, I don't have any pictures of this experience because in no way did I feel it was appropriate to be taking pictures of this very intimate feeling ceremony. So to light the cremation fire, the priest takes this unlit torch and walks over to this very special temple, the temple of the eternal flame and he lights the torch with the eternal flame that has been burning continuously for 3,000 years. It's called the eternal flame of Shiva. And every day, hundreds of devotees uh, make an offering of, a type, uh, of an oil. The eternal flame is like an oil lamp of sorts. And every day, the people walk by and they dump a small amount of oil into the reservoir. It's a big reservoir. And this exact process has been happening every day, continuously for 3000 years, nonstop. So the body's been burning for several hours now, and I've been there the whole time, just watching intently, watching, observing, and listening. You can hear, you can literally hear the body sizzling in the fire. 
when all of a sudden the eldest male of the family and I found out the specifics of all this after the fact but the eldest male of the family came out with a ceremonial looking stick and took it above his head and yelled something Om Namah Shiva Wham! and cracked the head of the deceased father wide open just split the skull wide open <laughs> and it was at that moment in Hindu thought that the soul is released from its journey in this world and it once again merges with the gods and it is at this moment it is said that the soul becomes free of the cycle of birth and death <laughs>